in today's video, I will show you how to create beautiful vintage fine art effect in Luminar Neo. We will start with a basic development, then transition the picture into the black and white, and then we work our way through the creative tools in Luminar Neo to get the best possible result. And then at the end, we will also save the look as a preset so you can use it in the future on your own photos. And now straight into Luminar Neo, where we're going to start in a catalog module looking at our sample files. As always, if you want to join me and do the edit on your own computer, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the sample files so you can practice on them. So once you have them downloaded on your computer, then add them into Luminar Neo and we can start. When you get them in, you will see it's two ladies, both dressed in this kind of vintage style clothes. So for the edit to start, we're going to use this lady with a camera in her hand. And all we need to do from here is to select the image and then move it into edit module. Just like with most of my edits, the first thing we're going to do is the basic development. So for this, we're going to navigate towards the main editing toolbar open the develop tool in an essential section. And the first thing we're going to do is to go into the optics where we make sure we have the auto defringe selected. It's just a default. I like to add this into all of my presets. So the auto defringe is the first thing we're going to do. After that, we're going to take care of noise and sharpness. Now, as it's going to be preset, we want to do this quite generally. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the luminosity slider and adjust it to 15. And then with the sharpening, as we are editing portrait and we don't want to add too much sharpness into the face features and into the skin, we're just going to add somewhere around 40. Once we have 40 entered, the last thing we need to do is to adjust masking. So let's go ahead and set it up to somewhere around 70 or 75. With the masking, we are just making sure that we only sharpening the areas that have a texture or edges on them. So 75 on masking, 40 on sharpen and 15 on luminosity. Now we can close sharpness and noise reduction and move into the light and blacks and whites. We're not going to adjust exposure or contrast, but we will adjust the highlights and shadows. With the highlights, let's make them a little bit darker. I'm thinking looking at the image somewhere around minus 30 or minus 35. And then with the shadows, what we're going to do, we are also going to make them even darker but not as far, maybe somewhere around minus 20. Then moving into blacks, whites with the blacks, let's make them a little brighter. I'm thinking again, somewhere around 20 or 25. And with the whites, we actually going to make them darker. So let's bring them down again. Keep an eye on the image itself. I think really that around minus 20 will work very well. So what we have, Highlights on minus 35, shadows on minus 20, blacks on 25, and whites on minus 20. And that's all there is to be done here in the develop tool. So we can close this now, close the light, close the tool, apply it to the image and move on with our edit. So we have done the basic development and now we can move into the black and white tool to transform the image into black and white. Now to do that, it's really simple. Just click on the convert to black and white, and then we're going to adjust the luminance. So basically the brightness of the individual colors. So make sure that you are on luminance here. And what we're going to do, we're going to keep an eye on the image and generally adjust all these colors to somewhere around minus 20 or minus 25. So starting from the top, let's go ahead and adjust the red. Now she has a red on her lips and some parts of the dress. So let's go ahead and maybe go to somewhere around minus 20 with the yellow. Keep an eye on the skin. That often is the area which gets uh, adjusted with the yellow. So let's go to just somewhere around minus 15. Then with the green again, let's keep an eye. 
that is not green on this image. So we're going to go for the standard minus 20 with the cyan. There is a cyan on the background. So again, let's go to minus 20 with the blue, just a little bit similar to minus 20. And with the magenta, let's go as well to minus 20. So what we did, red on minus 20, then yellow for the skin tones to minus 15, green on minus 20, and actually everything else on minus 20. Once we have this set, we can now close the black and white tool and continue. So we're going to move our attention into the creative section where we're going to add some film grain. So for this, we need to go all the way to the bottom of the creative section where there is the film grain tool. And first come first, we're going to adjust the amount. With the amount, we want to go quite high. I'm thinking around 20. Now, if you notice, when you add the film grain or when you edit it, lots of it appear on your screen. So it looks like it's way too much. However, it takes a moment and then it gets applied and it looks much more subtle. Similarly, when you apply the preset to the image, it takes few seconds for the grain to settle. So don't worry, it only takes few seconds and then everything looks much better. But we want to go further. We're going to click on size and roughness and increase that as well. Let's go for size. I'm thinking maybe on 25. And with the roughness, I actually want a lot of it. So I would go as far as 60 here. Now, again, let's give it a moment for it to settle. And that looks quite cool. Let's have a look at the before and after by using the little eye icon in the top right corner of the tool. And definitely the film gray adds something special to the image. Now, once we're done here, we can close the film grain and we're going to continue into the portrait section. Here, what we're going to do, we're going to go into the face AI tool where we're going to add a little bit of face light Nothing crazy. I think just somewhere around 10 will work very well. Then I like to go into the eyes where again, remember we are working on a standard preset. So we're not going to do anything too crazy here, but I think that little bit of eye whitening and little eye enhancer always go a long way. Maybe a little bit of dark circle removal. That's quite good as well and improve eyebrows. Now, all of these can be applied pretty much to all portrait photos. So that's why we can apply them and don't worry too much about what photo we're going to apply the preset to in the future. So just a little bit of eye whitening, eye enhancer, dark circle removal and improve eyebrows. We're not going to do anything to the mouth. So let's close the face AI and then just quickly into the skin AI, where all we're going to do is to increase the amount slider a little bit, just to smooth the overall skin, then use the shine removal, which I like to use a lot. And generally somewhere around 50 or 60 works quite well. Again, let's have a look at the before and after and the difference is quite subtle, but I think it's good to add it to the overall look. Finally, what we're going to do is to add an extra vignette. So for this, we need to go back to the essentials tool where we're going to open the vignette and start by taking the amount slider and bring it down. Now we want quite strong vignette. So I think somewhere around minus 45. And then what we're going to do, we are actually going to shift the vignette away from the center. Because on that kind of vintage photos, the vignette wasn't always exactly in the middle of the photo. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on choose subject and then select center of the vignette a little bit away from the center of the photo. So me, I am thinking somewhere around here. Once we're done, again, we can click on the choose subject and then open the advanced settings and use the little inner light slider to add extra brightness in this area of the image. Once we finish here, we can close the vignette tool and we are pretty much done with this look. So let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the before and after. And I think it's quite cool. So what we're going to do now, we're going to save it as a preset. And to do that, we need to go to the bottom of the window, click on actions and click on save as preset. That will bring us into the presets module of the application and also into the my presets folder here on the top. We will get the new preset. So now we can adjust the name to something like vintage portrait and we can just hit enter. 
So now when I go back to the catalog module and select the second image, we can now bring it into the presets, then make sure that you are in my preset section here. Just click on that. And you should have on the top, just like me, the vintage portrait. Once you click on it, it only takes a moment and it will be applied to your image. Now, looking at it, remember that you have the little slider here. You can actually adjust the power of the preset and see what works for this specific photo. But for now, let's leave it on 100 and move the image into edit module. Because there is one more thing I want to show you, and that's how we can add a little bit of tint to the image to create a variation on this specific look. Now, just before we're going to continue, a quick reminder about our best-selling Luminar Neo Power Bundle. Right now, just for $39, you can get over 986 new elements to power up your favorite Luminar Neo tools. You will get an incredible high-definition skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, working layers, LUTs, and presets to really transform your images with only few clicks. Now to get the best possible price, you can follow the link in the description of this video, or you can find out more about it on our website, cleverphotographer.com. Well, what we're going to do is very simple. We're going to go into the creative section where we're going to open the toning. Then we're going to take the amount slider and bring it all the way up. And then we're going to go into the shadows, increase the saturation just somewhere around 20, and then take the hue slider and bring it up a little bit. So we can, for example, create almost like a sepia look somewhere around here. We can increase the saturation just to be able to see the color. And I think somewhere around 35 looks good. Now it is up to you how much of the saturation you want. Maybe 35 sounds good or less or more. For me, I think around yeah, 40 looks good. Maybe a little bit more for sepia. And that's that. Now we can close the tool. And again, we can go into the actions, click on save as preset. And that will bring us back into the presets module again with the same option where we have the new preset on the top and we can call it this time vintage portrait sepia. Once you name it again, hit enter and we are done. So next time when you have another image, just like the first one, you can easily bring it into the presets and then just select the preset we have just created, click on it and it will be applied to your image. One more time, don't forget that you can adjust the strength of the look with a little slider. And when you're ready, you can then bring the image into the edit module and continue with the edit or adjust the look by going into the edit tab where you can adjust any of the tools we have just used to create this look. So let's have a look at the before and after and we are finished for today. And that's it for today. If you have any questions about today's tutorial or Luminar Neo in overall, then make sure that you write them in the comment section under this video. If you did enjoy today's tutorial, then please go ahead and like and share it. And also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our future content. For today, thank you very much for watching and I already can't wait to see you in the next video.